Hi Modern Miss Huxtables. Today I'm coming to you to discuss uh, what I will just call five things I wish I had known before going natural. And these are five things I basically wish that somebody had counseled me on or explained to me or told me about before I went natural because I think it would have saved me a lot of I don't know desperation or confusion or frustration in my journey. So the number one thing was I naively thought that all I had to do is go natural and then my hair was going to grow incredibly long. In my mind I believed that the main reason why my hair wasn't growing and reaching the hair goals that I wanted was because I had a relaxer. So in my mind I thought that once I cut my relaxer off and went completely natural it was going to be a matter of time before I had hair down my back. I just thought it was going to be like this. The relaxer is the main reason why my hair isn't growing so I'm going to go natural and I'm going to have hair for days. My hair is just going to be growing, 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 growing. And I did not realize that that's not necessarily the case. That you really do need to work towards having a goal of healthy hair before you really put all this emphasis and pressure on yourself to have long hair. And so I really, when I did my big chop, it was like having a new person on my head. I was like, what? I've never seen this hair before. I've never dealt with this hair before. I've never done this hair before. I had to completely relearn how to do my hair. And that process can be damaging to your hair. It can be damaging to your, <laughs> to your energy levels. I mean, it just, it was a process. And so learning how to do that, I sometimes would have really bad matted tangled areas or areas where I'd have to cut hair because I had let it get out of control and just too dry. So there are many instances where I actually had um, kind of complete stops in my growth or I actually kind of regressed in my growth. So it was a really big disappointment to me because I, in my mind, for some reason, had this belief that my hair was just going to grow super fast because I was natural. So that's my number one myth that I wish somebody had told me or explained to me. Don't go natural and think that two days later your hair is going to be down your back because that's literally what I naively and ignorantly thought, I'll admit. Number two would be, um, I thought that once I went natural and I cut my relaxer out, that I could still get permanent color and it wouldn't be damaging to my hair. I thought, I don't have a relaxer, so I'm not doing two chemical processes on top of each other. I'm just getting color, so it should be fine, right? It won't change my hair texture. It won't cause damage. My hair is natural and healthy, so I can get permanent color. Now, I see other YouTubers that have beautiful color on their on their hair and coils, other women that have locks and have beautiful lock colors. So sometimes, maybe it just depends on your texture or depends on your regimen or the time and energy that you can devote towards keeping your hair up. But for me, having color was not good, and I'm still dealing with the effects of that. Um, if you choose to do a big chop and cut your relaxer off, and then you go behind that and do permanent dye, I don't know what what was going on in my mind. Why did, why it didn't occur to me, Allison? When you do that, you're gonna have to wait for your hair all that to regrow back out again. I I thought I can dye my hair blonde and then I just dye over it black and it's back to black. It's back to normal. Nothing's wrong. Nothing happens. But that's not the case. Um, chemical dye or permanent dye really altered my texture. Now, kind of the bottom half of my hair still has that dye and especially now that it's starting to get warm and the sun is out in the spring and summer it will continue to lighten it will get a light brown and it looks like a fake whack ombre that i wasn't going for and so um i have to dye on top of it so now i use natural dye i use henna and indigo but it's still a hassle to have to keep re-dyeing over that until that grows all the way back out also I won't say that it was the most damaging to my hair, but it did change the texture, which is very annoying because I have already kind of different textures across my head, so that kind of created a more loose curl pattern, I guess, or a different curl pattern for my new growth, which can be kind of frustrating and annoying. And I just, I wish I had researched at the time henna, I wish I had researched at the time natural forms of hair dye, because I definitely would have opted for those, I was just ignorant. So once again, going back to my title of these are things I wish someone had told me, I wish someone had said to me, before you go the permanent dye route by just going to Target or going to CVS and getting an over-the-counter dye, maybe try a rinse or maybe try a henna, a henna option. And there's a lot of sellers of henna online that you can do all types of um, different mixtures to get different hair colors and always do a strand test. Do one strand to see how it reacts to your particular hair, but I wish someone had explained to me there's natural alternatives that aren't as permanent and permanent dye probably isn't 
the best route so I wish someone had told me that so number three um, I wish someone had kind of debunked the myths I had in my mind that having natural hair was going to be easier I believed out of ignorance that it was going to be easier it was going to be less time consuming I was just going to do wash and goes and run out the house I wasn't going to have to get my hair done or sit in the salon all day it was just going to be so easy and simple and I'm not saying that natural hair can't be that way but it's definitely different I, I don't want to make it sound like this is good or bad or this is simple or hard but it's different and it requires a completely different learning process and so finding a natural hair salon literally through my life I, I have a salon that I would go to for my natural hair cur in its curly state but I would not go there to get my hair pressed or I have salons I would go to when I used to get sew and weaves I would get a sew and weave there but I would never get my real hair done there I mean you have to find a salon you have to find you don't have to but I'm just saying you'd have to maybe refine a salon refine a stylist rework all of your products figure out new products figure out new ways of detangling moisturizing caring for your hair um, I'm going to make a video soon. A different, I have a different nighttime routine when my hair is curly. Just everything gets reworked and I won't necessarily say that it's less time. Like when my hair is straight, I literally take two minutes. I'm a wrap, I can wrap my hair in literally like 30 seconds. I wrap my hair at night, I wrap my, take it out in the morning and I'm ready to go. Boom. It's done. When my hair is in its curly state, I spend a lot more time applying moisture to it every day, applying different products, making sure the curls aren't flat or I don't have like pillow head or whatnot from bed head from the night before. So it's a lot of, I don't want to say hard work or make it seem negative, but it does take a different type of thought process that if you're not prepared for or don't kind of have guidance on can be kind of tedious and annoying and frustrating at first. So that's something I wish people had told me about um, before I went natural. The fourth thing would be I wish that I'd understood more the importance of knowing my particular texture. It is very important that you know your texture hair so that you can be making the right choices when it comes to shopping for products. The reason why I say that is a lot of times I would watch people's YouTube videos and I'd be looking at people whose textures I wanted to have but weren't the textures that I had so I would get all the products that they said to use and then I'd be like why didn't my hair turn out like their hair like why is my hair look different or my hair looks her hair didn't look come out that way and it was because I wasn't understanding that no her hair is a different texture her hair is a different curl pattern or her hair is a different like you have to try to find someone that has a similar curl pattern and texture to your own and then in my opinion it can be easier that way to find products that match so if someone has a very light wavy curl pattern and they can maybe use a less a product with less hold or less aloe vera gel for example or something that has more shea butter and is kind of a light moisturizer where if, whereas if I try to do that my hair might be frizzy and not the way that I want it styled or I won't have good curl definition so it's important to know your particular texture and be buying products for your texture and don't fall into the trap of what I'll call and I guess people call hair envy or hair jealousy or you know you you have I wish I had that curl Lo love your hair love your hair love you love the way your hair is made in the way that it grows and just find what works for you it can be difficult it can be tedious it can be costly to there's so many options sometimes that it's overwhelming but I do think that learning and understanding your texture and your curl pattern can help to make that process a little bit easier so my last thing number five would be I wish that I had someone to explain or someone to help me even now with tangling and moisturizing. I literally live in fear of my hair getting tangled because all it takes is one day without me kind of detangling or re-moisturizing and I will have knots. I will have like matted sections and I'm, I cringe because I know when it comes time to detangle that I'm going to be using a lot of conditioner, a lot of detangler and I can only hope that it's going to come out neatly. And the reason why I say that also is a lot of women or some women with natural hair, they don't really straighten their hair at all anymore. But when you straighten your hair, you will see the negative effects if you haven't been detangling or taking care of your hair properly curly because it'll look ragged. It'll look a mess. So I really have to be careful when I'm detangling and I have to be patient. 
sometimes I literally just want to run the comb through my hair, get it over with, get out the door for work or go to sleep. I'm done. You know, I'm over it. I don't want to spend any more time in it, but I really have to be patient, slowly work through the hair, remove tangles, slowly um, apply as much detangler as necessary, even if that means half a bottle to get through my hair to get it to where I can kind of even finger detangle. But my hair, even though the curl pattern isn't... Um, extremely extremely tight it really does get tangled really easily and that can be a big no no not fun and also moisturizing um i have a spray bottle that i keep extra virgin olive oil mixed with water in and i wa wet my hair probably every day my hair loves moisture it drinks up moisture i can't stand when i reach in the back of my head and it doesn't feel soft to the touch it just feels like it's starting to dry up and sometimes that requires me putting moisture on my hair every other day every day i just do it on a need basis but um, I didn't know initially how much moisture my hair was going to need, that I was going to need to be applying products probably every two days at least, and that I was going to need to constantly be applying water and making sure I wasn't having tangled areas. When I first started wearing my hair natural and did the big chop, there were instances when literally I just thought, oh, I'll just go four days, I'll do a wash and go and go four days without touching my hair. Mm -mm, doesn't work. I had an area in the back of my head in the center that when it came time for me to wash my hair and detangle it, when I tell you a huge clump of my hair came out, a huge, just piece, just piece, there was no way to even detangle it. It was knotted and matted in, in a, a ball. And when it came time for me to get my hair straightened to get it trimmed at the salon that I went to at the time, my hair was like some hair was up here. Then there was a big gap and there was some hair. It was horrible. And she ended up having to cut off inches to get it to kind of round and trim all the way out. And that was from not watching my my tangles, not applying moisturizing products to make sure that tangles were coming out. And so that was a setback. And I'm going to make a video soon going into each of the stages of my hair journey. But, I mean, it's devastating to go to the salon and it's like a chunk of your hair is missing or these ends are just so split and ragged. We're going to have to take it up four inches. Whew, devastating so hope that was helpful I can elaborate on any of those or comment below and I'll respond to you but that was five things that I kind of had to learn the hard way on my journey and I wish someone had explained to me more clearly or helped me with so hope all is well please subscribe take care